Hey Cancer, this is Dana with Deep Thoughts with Dana, and this is your June mid-monthly reading. These are your deep thoughts for the next couple weeks of June. Alrighty, so this is a general reading for the sign of Cancer. If you have Cancer anywhere in your chart, this reading very well may resonate with you. There's a link in the box below where you too can go discover what the planetary positions were on the day that you were born, and you can discover all of your corresponding signs, right? Moon sign, sun sign, rising sign, Venus sign, the whole shebang, right? Just if you have cancer anywhere in your chart, this very well may resonate with you. Now, this is a general reading based on the overall energy flowing through the sign of cancer based on the planetary positions and what's happening in the universe with things that I don't know anything about. However, I do know this is a general reading and um, do not make a decision based on a general reading. Few and far between our general readings, actually your reading, okay? All right, don't make a decision based on a general reading. If you'd like your own reading or if you would like confirmation, understanding um, of anything that is mentioned in this reading, you can reach out to me at deepthoughtswithdana.com. If you are a subscriber to this channel, you can link, you can link, you can click the link in the box below and get the YouTube special. That's a $50, 45-minute reading just for you, just for your situation. And whether it's a reading with me or with anybody else, it is worth its weight in gold for the peace of mind that it will bring. Now we can do a reading for you. We can hop into the minds of other people and see how they feel about the situation. Um, we can give you confirmation of your own intuition. Just don't make a personal decision off of my general reading or anybody's general readings, okay? Okay, all right. So business aside, disclaimers aside, let's get into this reading, Cancer. And I'm gonna warn you, I have Gemini on my mind for some reason. And uh, so if I call you Gemini, uh, maybe you're dealing with a Gemini. I don't know. Maybe a Gemini is important to this situation or to you in some way. Could be. Maybe not. Maybe I just have Gemini on the mind, right? So anyway, um, if you're dealing with a Gemini, uh, there you go. If I call you Gemini, I am fully aware that I am with Cancer energy right now, okay? So I apologize in advance if that happens. No, don't blow I'm outside. And it's just so beautiful and... Um, I just don't want my cards to blow. Okay, so we start out this reading with the Wheel of Fortune. This is good luck, karma, destiny, and a turning point. Now, I wanted to know what the root of this wheel was. Why is it that your whole reading is opening up with such awesomeness? Well, the clarifying cards were the Magician and the Wheel of Fortune. So what this tells me is that you at some point in your life have filled the karma bucket, right? You have manifested this turning point, this good luck, this karma that's coming your way. And the universe has taken your full bucket and is dumping it out all over you. It is showering down good luck karma in your life. Now, what you have to do here is with this king of swords is to make some kind of a very big decision huge decision that hinges on this turning point in your life right here this decision is all about the ace of wands it's all about the ace of wands and the seven of swords okay it's about it's about an inspired it's about taking inspired action having an inspired new beginning okay the Ace of Cups says that this is all about your feelings. It's all about your feels. And this decision is going to create a tower moment in your life. Whether this tower moment is a revelation and an awakening, or if it's upheaval, chaos, sudden change, or if it's all of the above, this decision is going to create a tower moment in your life. This decision is the tower moment in your life. What is this decision about? This decision is about the seven of swords, okay? So I'm gonna I'm gonna jump forward real quick, okay? So we have the six of cups over here, which is the past. Then we have the star card, which is renewal, and we have the two of cups and the Prince of Cups in the center of your reading. So I'm going to go out on a limb here, Cancer, and say that this Seven of Swords, which is the crux of this decision for the King of Swords, is about betrayal, deception, 
and just general shady behavior that was in a relationship from your past. And what you have to do now is decide if you are going to break free from the mental challenges of what happened in the past, because what's on the table is a new beginning and a new journey. That's what's on the table, a new beginning and a new journey. The Queen of Pentacles, this new beginning, this new journey, this deceit, this perception, deception, this shady behavior from the past that you're trying to decide if you can break free from in order to have an inspired new beginning and, and, and let this, this good luck and this good karma overflow into your life is related to the Queen of Pentacles. This Queen of no, 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 no. Sorry, Cancer. Sorry. It's just so beautiful outside today, right? I just want to be outside. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get myself back together here. Okay. So, this Queen of Pentacles, this could be either a person in your life because the King of Pentacles is down here again as well. And so I'm really feeling that this is a, a person in your life. It could be an earth energy, could be a Taurus, could not be, doesn't have to be. It should equate to be at least somebody who has the characteristics and the qualities of a Queen of Pentacles or a King of Pentacles type of person, right? Some kind of earthy type of person. This Queen of Pentacles is also about your home and your security, okay? It's also about building. So this decision revolves around whether you can forgive and forget from the past or not. The past with some kind of, of earthy type of energy. This Eight of Wands right here says that there's going to be an energetic movement in this situation, whether it's communication, whether it is traveling, or whether it's just an energetic push. That's what's happening. The Eight of Wands is about uh, movement, action, swift change, right? And the Six of Swords talks about a transition, <coughs> excuse me, a transition from choppy waters into calmer waters. We come down here and see you in the hermit energy, right? Doing some soul searching and some introspection, trying to get a handle on this whole situation, trying to do just get some, seeking some inner guidance, right? Just trying to get a handle on it. What you're contemplating and reevaluating in this hermit mode is your passion for the situation. Your passion for the situation with the queen of fire right here, right? You're trying to, to figure out if this is something that you want to do or not. The Prince of Cups in the center of your reading, this whole decision is about whether or not you want to give your cup of love to somebody or accept somebody else's cup of love. Nine of Swords comes in and says that this puts you in a hard place. It puts you in a hard place because this is a very painful lesson from the past. And the King of Swords, you know, this just isn't like a little decision. This is whatever this was right here really wrecked you. And this King of Swords is the energy of, of, of not taking things lightly, right? So you're up in your head with the Nine of Swords, hard up in your head with the nine of swords, some despair, right? Some anxiety, some torment about the situation because with the 10 of swords right here, this, whatever this, whatever this was in the past, um, ended badly. And I get the impression that maybe, um, it's been dead and gone for a minute now too. Okay. So you're in your head and you're contemplating this Ten of Swords, this relationship that ended badly in the past that has been dead and gone. You're contemplating regenerating it because the Queen of Swords is, again, you have a huge decision to make, right? If the King of Swords could be here, it, it probably would, but it's already up there. So you have the Queen of Swords and the King of Swords energy that you're making a decision about reuniting and reconciling with the Six of Cups trying to make the decision if you can let this seven of swords go and have a new beginning, an inspired beginning, and a new journey with this person. We'll come down here to the Prince of Pentacles. Um, and I, and I want to say this has been, 
like I said, dead and gone from a while ago cancer because the Prince of Pentacles is a real slow moving energy, right? A slow moving energy clarified by the alchemist, the magician, slowly manifesting this into your life. And there's the magician there again, manifesting, right? Slowly manifesting this into your life. The high priestess comes in. This high priestess tells me that you are, um, you know, you're sitting down with this high priestess in the hermit and the nine of swords, okay? This is soul searching, checking your subconscious mind, your intuition, going over and over and over again about um, if this is your purpose in life right now, if this is real, if this is something that you should go forward with. What is this something? a two of cups relationship, right? A unified partnership of some sort, love, family, career, doesn't matter, but it's some kind of partnership. And when I talk about this Prince of Cups in the center of your reading, giving your cup of love, your cup of feels, it could be business, right? Because you have to be emotionally invested. So I guess the better way to say this in the center of your reading is this, this decision is whether you want to be emotionally invested in this situation or not. The King of Pentacles, reflection of this Queen of Pentacles right here, Cancer, just a total reflection. It's the same energy. It's the same person. And the King of Pentacles energy is about power and um, control, abundance, discipline, right? So this energy also lends itself to you regaining control of this situation because in the Nine of Swords right here, you're not in control, right? The Seven of Swords, you definitely weren't in control, but you can be in control of it if you flip it and break free of those mental challenges. So we have you in the Four of Swords contemplating not just contemplating. This guy made it back from battle, right? He's giving thanks to the powers that be for him that he made it back alive. He has three of his swords hanging in the back as a trophy for his battle, but he still has one sword by his side. And what he's contemplating right here is if he wants to pick it up and fight again. Hence, breaking free of the mental challenges from the Seven of Swords right there. That is, that's what he's thinking about. Is this worth the fight? Three of Pentacles comes in, which gives me an inclination that maybe the Seven of Swords has something to do with a third party situation, doesn't have to, just wanted to throw that out there. So the Three of Pentacles comes in. What you're contemplating is teamwork, collaboration. Seven of Pentacles talks about reflection and assessment, right? Reflection and assessment. It also talks about waiting, which goes back to this slow energy with the Prince of Pentacles and the manifestation with the magicians, right? to the death card. This is an this is an ending of the way things were and a transformation into the way things will be. Topped off by the star card. This is having hope, having faith in the renewal of a 6 of cups relationship. And that's where this reading ends. Whether you go forward with this or not, cancer is completely and totally a personal prerogative. But these cards end with you having hope and faith in the purpose of a renewal with this person from your past. There you go. If you want a personal reading, you can hit me up at deepthoughtswithdana.com. If you subscribe to my channel, click the link below, get 50% off. Like this video if you liked it, share it if you think it will help somebody, and drop a comment if you'd like to. I read all of the comments and I do respond to them. It, sometimes it takes me a week or two to get around to it, but I do do it and I thoroughly enjoy um, hearing what you guys have to say, but no negativity. If there's negativity in there, you're bashing other signs or doing any kind of stupid thing, I'll just delete it. So just don't even bother to do that. But if you want to leave a positive comment about how this situation um, relates to your life, I would love to hear about it. All right, Cancer. Namaste.